Well, it was in the mid-80s um, when we had an inquiry from someone at I, a uh, consultant at IBM about developing new ways to help people who were paralyzed interact with computers. So uh, based on some old EEG work that I knew about, I suggested we might be able to use EEG signals, and we just kind of went from there using software and hardware that we already had to turn lights on and off and then move cursors on a screen. And it just sort of went from there. And we got initial support from IBM and then support from NIH in the early 90s. First turning the lights on and off and uh, getting cursors to move primarily in two dimensions. When we finally got the two dimensions, that was, a, I th think, a pretty big deal. Because before that, it was a, like a nonspecific effect we were, it could be. Um, or a uh, state, you know, an overall brain state change. But once we got to two dimensions, um, it was clear to me that, you know, we were getting significant control, um, significantly usable control. And then actually having patients, uh, a few patients at least, uh, use our system and benefit from it, write us emails using the system. My research starting in the spinal cord, connecting up the basis of a uh, simple learned behavior, determining exactly how the brain learns that and how it goes about continuing to perform it. Um, basically the change in a, in a simple spinal reflex. Because they get better, less disabled people will be interested in using them. Um, people who are, for example, in wheelchairs but otherwise functional. Um, so, I mean, that's part of the expansion of the user group, which just go to people who are less motor disabled. Uh, if people, if it becomes useful for rehabilitation, then that's a huge new potential market that it could expand into. Um, so those are kind of the major, I think, therapeutic uses that I'd foresee um, and expansions in the population. Oh, yeah, definitely, yes. I think there should be a very strong emphasis on actually producing things that are and showing, showing that they actually help people. Um, there should be development of uh, standards for how you go about validating systems, how you go about comparing systems, and the comparison should be in terms of actual practical uses um, that would be valuable to people. Well, it's nice to see how it's matured over the past 10 years and just sort of the, the growing sophistication of the people here and, and sort of the common understanding of the problems. Um, people 10 years ago were coming from very different areas and were almost speaking different languages in regard to BCI research. And um, that's not really true anymore. People understand the issues and uh, understand the major problems and the major I think the major things that have to be done if the field's going to continue to develop and be productive.